This is the National Video Journalist Network. Welcome to My Long Island TV. From Manhasset to Montauk, we've traveled our communities to bring you the following events. I'm your host, Waldo Cabrera. My Long Island TV starts now. What makes you think you can get away with this? What are you gonna do? Kill me? Everybody dies. Before there was James Dean, before there was Marlon Brando, before there was Robert De Niro and Al Pacino, there was John Garfield. Tonight, Julie Garfield, his daughter, is here at the Cinema Arts Center, and she's telling his story, along with David Healy and Joan Kramer, the filmmakers who made the John Garfield story, among many other great films. It's going to be an absolutely fabulous night. Please, give me... Why can't I shut you up? John Garfield's story, it is so dramatic. It's almost a Hollywood movie. In fact, we, we, Julie and I have said so many times, why has nobody made a movie about John Garfield's life? Street Kid to theater in New York, to movies in Hollywood, huge star who came crashing down. Very largely because he was hounded by the House and American Activities Committee uh, at the time of the communist witch hunts in the early 50s. The committee had actually been going for quite a while and it, it had lost its luster people losing interest, they decided they had to get something that would get them headlines. Big they price. wanted a big movie star, and they hit on John Garfield. Love your funny face. When I was asked to do funny face, it was the fulfillment of a dream that I, like every other woman in the world, had always had. To dance with Fred Astaire. We used to produce uh, a, a number of programs for television. We, Joan, my partner, and I, we got a call saying, would you be interested in doing a show about John Garfield? And I said, oh, nobody's done it? They said, no. And I said, that would be incredible, and I would love to be involved in that. Robbie called the doctor, but Catherine died in her mother's arms, the victim of a full-scale allergic reaction. I still have Catherine's little bracelet, which my parents saved. I was born early the next year. It was a very emotional experience because I narrated the documentary and in a way I felt as if it cleansed me. It was kind of this feeling of horrible danger as I grew up. The FBI was following my father wherever he went and they were tapping his phone so I, I think we were all very aware of that. Right after my father died, the FBI came to our apartment. And in those days, the FBI men were very scary looking. They wore these hats and raincoats, just like in old movies. And uh, my mother um, screamed at them, and she basically said, you killed him already. You got what you wanted. What else do you want from us? She called Joan and uh, me, and she said, what am I going to do about Kazan? <laughs> If I invite Kazan to the party, nobody else will come. John and I, you, you press a button and we tell you a story <laughs> about somebody. And people said, oh, write a book, write a book. The, the, the stories that we used to tell when you press the button were about big stars. Uh, but we realized that we had to have some glue to put those stories together. And although it was never meant to be a, a book about how we produced the documentaries, that was actually the glue that held these stories together. Oh, at the opening of the first chapters, Mr. Astaire is furious because Mr. Astaire did not want us to do a show about him. The question before this committee and the scope of its present inquiry will be to determine the extent of communist infiltration in the Hollywood motion picture industry. To be a documentary filmmaker, you've got to learn how to tell a story. The, the temptation is always to say, well, he was born here and he died there, and then fill it the bits in between. Right. But uh, you know, as a storyteller, that's not the best way to tell the story. You have to find some dramatic moment to engage your audience to start with. And then you find a way to go from there to the beginning. But actually, the story from A, B to C to D is actually so dramatic, you could almost do it that way in the case of John Garfield. You find out it's not that easy. Nothing comes free. One way or another, you pay for what you have. 